They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Ariane is imprisoned atop the spear tower, contemplating her failed scheme. She never expected someone to inform her father of the plan, and nor for Ario Hotar to intercept them, and certainly not Gerald Dane's unprovoked attack on Marcella. Dane escaped from Hotar's men, but he left a terrible scar on Marcella's face, barely missing a beheading stroke as was his apparent intent. Thinking her father would see her within a day, Ariane becomes distraught as days turn into weeks, and although servants come and go with food, none will speak to her. She considers who could have betrayed her, ponders her feelings at the loss of Sir Aris, and thinks of her close relationship with Tyene. She eventually persuades the young serving girl Cedra to deliver a letter to Lord Fowler, knowing that the girl has feelings for Garin, who Ariane assumes is imprisoned at Gaston Grey, along with her other co-conspirators. But the next day, Cedra does not return, and Ariane never sees her again during her imprisonment. After an indeterminate period of agonised waiting, Ario Hota arrives to bring her before her father. Prince Duran asks her why, to which Ariane replies, for the honour of our house. The prince tells her they have not caught Dane, but the damage he did to Marcella, a ward of their house, has done naught but bring the Martels dishonour. He cautions her that a war with the Iron Throne is the last thing they need. Although the young dragon wrote that Dawn was populous, his memoirs were written to portray himself in a better light. Prince Duran admits that Dawn is actually the least populous of the Seven Kingdoms and could not survive war with the throne. He admits it was a mistake not to have had her taken prior to running off with Marcella, but he will not reveal who betrayed her. When he tells her that she disappoints him, Ariane retorts, You have been disappointing me for years, father. Prince Duran discloses that none of her co-conspirators are imprisoned. Instead, he has sent Sir Andrew Dalt to Norvos to serve Ariane's mother. Garin is in Tyrosh for two years, and Silva was sent to Greenstone to marry Lord Eldon Estamont. He goes on to remark that Ariane and her cousins may get the war they wanted, as Sir Balon Swan is on his way to Sunspear. The prince has several of his bannermen stalling him, but eventually Sir Balon will discover that his brother in the Kingsguard, Sir Aris, is dead, and Marcella maimed. Ariane continues to taunt her father, and he cautions her that he is out of patience. But the princess is unimpressed, remarking, For Lord Tywin you always had the forbearance of Balor the Blessed, but for your own blood, none. He responds, You mistake patience for forbearance. I have worked at the downfall of Tywin Lannister since the day they told me of Elia and her children. When Ariane tells him that she wants her rights to Dorne, Prince Duran finally reveals that she will have the kingdom when he passes. Ariane divulges that she knew of his scheme to make Quentin his heir, but her father tells her that he had other plans for her. He offered her hand to old men, because he knew that she would rebuke them, but he had to be seen as trying. All along, he had promised her to Prince Viserys, but now that the last male Targaryen is dead, he has no reason to deny her her right to dawn. He finishes by saying, we princes make our careful plans and the gods smash them all awry. His original plan was to send her to Tyrosh to serve as the Archon's cupbearer, where she could meet her betrothed in secret, while her brother Quentin was being raised to assume the seat of their house. Finally, he reveals why her brother is overseas, to bring back their heart's desire. When Ariane asks what that is, her father presses a Sivash dragon piece into her hand and replies, Vengeance, justice, fire and blood. <laughs>